right, I think this is good. We can get started now. So you can see the chart of TQQQ, uh, which is uh, an ETF that moves three times the Qs percentage wise. Oh, uh, that's the one I love to trade, and Channing knows that too well. I highly recommend it to anyone because of its potential. Uh, but it's the same if you look at Qs and then you can take any derivatives thereof and, and trade it. Uh, basically, what we, we've been doing is we've looked at the basics, the zigzags, higher highs, higher lows to have our entries. Then we've added uh, to that, we've added Fibonacci uh, to find an area of value. We don't chase prices. When price is moving in a direction that we like, when, once it makes a trend, we want to follow that trend. But instead of buying at high spots, we find an area of value when price comes down to some uh, FIB level. And for me, that area is uh, the green to green zone between the 38.2 and 61.8% retracement. That's where I find uh, value. So, and then I look for a candlestick pattern to enter and to exit so this is just the basics right and then to that we added uh, areas where we find strong support in the form of demand and supply this is where institutions are telling us uh, hey we have a large order here we want to take the price up next time we come back down we could add to that order so we've added that Today, what I want to add uh, to this whole uh, process is, again, finding additional uh, tools that we can use that will help us go in the direction that uh, the market wants to go, right? And again, it's all about finding uh, leverage, finding the... Uh, place where the probability stacks in our favor. That's the key part of trading is making sure we're trading on the right side. When when we are wrong, we're wrong quickly and we can get out. Uh, and we are right more than wrong because we always trade when the probability is in our favor. That's why this, this Fibonacci for me is the most critical tool I can use. And when I add a uh, a supply zone, or a demand zone to it, that even becomes more powerful. If I have identified this zone, when price is here, if I have identified this zone, then when price comes down, I have a decision I can make. This is a very strong area. And, and we've talked about this a few times. The 61.8 retracement on the weekly seems to be a very strong support. Like my green to green zone, right? 61.8. It comes near it, it rejects. It comes near it, rejects. Near it, rejects. So this has been a very strong area. And in addition, it was a demand zone, like a weekly demand zone. So when price comes to that zone, I have a decision to make. When I see the pattern that I want, I pull the trigger. That's as simple as that. Now, what is it that we add, right? What is the other thing that we want to add? And I know you guys have been waiting eagerly for this for the last couple of weeks. And so uh, we've added a MACD. Uh, now, I want to preface that and I want to make sure that you really understand. The MACD does not tell me to pull the trigger. It's just a confirmation. It's just a way for me to add to my probability. Is everything else lining up? Am I good to go? That's all I want to see. Right, so as, as we're adding to that, uh, so we've seen, we've add this uh, uh, MACD. So in the MACD, uh, you've seen the numbers that I use, right? You've seen those numbers, uh, 13 for fast, 21 for slow. Uh, I like the uh, exponential moving average and the signal smoothing eight, and I don't show I don't show histogram. You'll see histogram here. I don't show it because that's that's not where uh, my trading is about. It's again it's for confirmation, so I don't want to see uh, that. So now, 
how do I use it to tell me a trade? This is just the critical part. So you see these two lines, they're moving down as price is moving down. Right, great. So what is going on? What I want to see is when, so this is the critical part. From this low to this low, price is going down, right? Very clear. Low to low is, that means lower low, not higher low. This is making a lower low. However, in the MACD, it, in that same period, it's making a higher low. This tells me price has found a footing it's about to reverse. This is that additional confirmation I'm talking about. Price comes down, 61.8, confirmation one. Lower, high, lower, high, lower, high, price is coming down. 61.8. And it rejects, demand zone rejects, two confirmations. Now, the third confirmation is the MACD is making a higher low. That's my confirmation. Now, at this point, I am very, very comfortable entering a trade. I'm more comfortable entering this trade than I am this trade. Because this trade, the MACD has not confirmed. Price is making lower low, MACD is making lower low. So, it, those are moving in the same direction, right? There is no divergence. But when there's divergence, when price and MACD are saying opposite things, it's time to pay attention. It's, it's, it's all about paying attention. So I started at the weekly because it's, it's stronger to see it on the weekly. It is better to see it uh, on the weekly. That's why I started there. Uh, and then when you move to the daily, You can again make the same kind of drawing in the daily if you see it. Price is making lower lows. Is MACD making lower low? Uh, maybe about equal low. Again, that kind of tells you something is up. But here, look at it very clearly on this one. This is the first one on the weekly where I said I don't feel comfortable, but on the daily, on the daily that same area higher low right this whole thing repeats constantly if you let it come to you right the trade is about letting it come to you right? you don't chase it you just let it come to you so you see higher low here lower low here you can feel comfortable i take this trigger now the second part this one though right on the daily chart, we see this, and on the MACD, we see about equal, equal high, but the weekly is a stronger anyway, so the weekly had already told you I'm about to reverse, so you can feel comfortable taking that reverse. Now, once you do that, you, your next area is your, how do I pull the trigger? Where is my pull the trigger? That's all the decision you need to make, is you come to your, Whatever time frame you use, right? We use the one hour. Whatever time frame you want to use. When I saw the divergence in the high, uh, in the daily time frame, right? In the higher time frame, I saw that divergence. And here I see uh, a hammer. Boom! This is this was time to enter. You got that confirmation. It's time to enter. You don't hesitate at this moment. Now you're not looking for the one hour MACD to do the same thing because that's already late. The daily has already showed you it's time to get in, right? Because when you look at the one hour, it's, it's actually lower because it's, it's more precise uh, price movements. So you're not looking for that on the hour. If you were to trade 15 minute chart or a five minute chart, maybe you look for that divergence, but for me, if, if I see it on the weekly or the, uh, or the daily, when I come to my pull the trigger, it's, it's just time to enter. There's no more analysis to be done. So let me pause and see if there are any uh, questions here. Yeah, the, the only question I had is like, what is like MACD like fundamentally represent? Like, like Fibonacci's or retracement, like what's, what is it tracking? Yes, very good. 
So MACD is moving average convergence divergence. That's what it stands for. And uh, if you looked at the uh, settings that we've used, first moving average, fast meaning it tracks the last 13 bars, uh, the close, right? Because we chose close. You could choose anything here. You could choose anything here you want. I, I'm comfortable with the close, I, so I choose the close. So the last, whatever time frame you're at, you just look at the close of the last 13 bars and it gives you the average. So each point is the average of the previous 13 bars on a close basis. That's the slow average. And then, uh, I mean the fast average. And then the slow average for me is 21 bars. So the average of the last 21 bars. Okay. Uh, signal smoothing, I don't know what that is, but I, I think it's just something they add for the calculation when they bring the two together. So what, what you would see, like people who like to trade uh, moving average crossovers, they would plot the 13 and 21 here, for example. I don't I don't know many people who use 13 21 but people like to use it like the 5 and 20 the 50 and 100 things like that and when they cross they will, they will enter those are kind of the cross is a very very lagging indicator and that's kind of too late when the cross happened uh so that's why you know for me when I tell you on the MACD don't use it as hey it's time to enter use it as just a confirmation because it's very late sometimes when it gives you uh, signal like if you're waiting for the blue line to cross the red line to enter or if you're waiting for the blue line to cross the zero line like it, it might be late but in general that's what it's looking at fast moving average slow moving average whether it's uh, exponential or it's uh, simple uh, when it's exponential it puts more weight to recent when it's simple it's just a straight uh, average right it if every bar has equal weight. Uh, so that's what it's calculating. And all I want to see is as price is making a move in one direction or another, is it starting to uh, show a sign that that trend is weakening? Basically, that's what the divergence is telling us, that the strength is weakening. But that was a good question. That makes sense, okay. Thanks. Yeah. What else? Maybe. Hey, um, do you use this primarily for kind of identifying reversals? Is that is that kind of how you would use this new tool set? I like I like this question, but so here's how I'm going to answer it. Uh, as you guys know, I always say uh, only trade trend following. Don't do reversal trading, right? So that's what I always say. Now, the reason why I like this question is when you go to your time frame and, and when you're deciding when is it time to enter, right? Because we said, we always said, we don't chase, right? We don't enter up here, we're entering at a pullback. And so this is in a way it's a trend reversal, but the trend reversal that says, when is the pullback done? Right? When, it's not about when a new trend is forming, is in the bigger picture. My bigger picture is an uptrend. I have a pullback in that uptrend. When is that pullback done? From that sense, it's a trend reversal, right? It's reversing the most recent pullback trend. But in general, I'm entering in the same direction as my bigger picture, right? right? So we, if we start on, on our monthly, Right. If we start on our monthly chart and we say in our monthly left to right, it's an uptrend. It just has a, a deep pullback. I want to know when this pullback is over. That's what I like to use it. for. Right. So that's why I go to the weekly and I see it. Boom, it's time to enter. And it's the same, same process when it's going up. It's the same process. If price is making a higher high, but your MACD is making a lower high, what happened? Right at that spot, we have a pullback. 
Exactly at that spot we have a pulpa. Even if you take it further, it went higher. What does the MACD do? It, it continues to go lower. That dry Z tells you, this area here, extreme weakness. It's, it's saying that the momentum is done. It doesn't say for how long. It just says currently the momentum is done. We, because we don't trend reversal, we say, okay, it's time to exit my position. If you have an entry that you took at this pullback, if you have this entry, this divergence tells you, oh, you know what? I'm going to tighten my stop. I don't want to give back. All this gain you've taken, you've given it back in a few days. I don't want to do that, right? So you tighten your stop because the market is telling you, hey, uh, think about uh, what's going on here. So in both directions, same concept, the exact same concept. And as you practice, you can kind of change these numbers around, right? The 13218 or the uh, uh, EMA. You can play around with those and find something that works better for you. Uh, I just like these uh, numbers when I use a MACD. Uh, so that, that, that numbers don't really matter. What matters is, does it give you the signal that you're looking for? Does it give you the precision you're looking for? And right? if you use 2189, for example, is that, you know, that those are too wide of uh, moving averages. That's something that would work for you. So that's a decision you need to make. Uh, but at least as a starting point, I gave you some good numbers to plug in. That's a good starting point. Uh, and then if price is moving in your direction, use it as... A place to say hey i did not hit my exit target but the market is saying there's weakness i can exit or price is pulling back i have an entry i pull the trigger right <laughs> both ways are valid what else Um, in terms of the different color coding uh, on the on the two, is the orange one the long one, and then the blue one the short one? Uh, so it depends on how you set it up, right? So here, uh, the uh, MACD line and the signal line. The signal line is this. The MACD line is these two combined. Right, these two combined is the blue one, and then the signal line. Uh, is the orange one so i don't know exactly how it's calculated right so it's just a little complicated i don't worry about that and for me it's not even uh, important what the colors do what i'm looking at is as a combination what are they doing right you can almost you can almost do this uh, let's see. Uh, you can almost do this or or this Either way, you can almost do that and just only look at one line. Right? Those two lines don't really matter to me because I'm not using it in the conventional way. I'm not using it in the way that the creator created it for. So it's like, hey, I just want confirmation that either my direction has found exhaustion or my pullback says it's time for me to take a trade. Right, always area of value. The most critical thing is area of value. I come to an area of value, green to green or demand zone. Do I need to enter? Yes. This guy says yes, enter. I take the trade. It gives me com more confidence. Then, you know, if I'm wrong, it's okay because you say if you take this trade here, uh, let's just go to uh, this one hour is better. Let's go to one hour chart. And here's the first time. If you take this trade, all you have is a very, very small stop. Your entry to your exit is, you know, the seven point move. But when you double that, 
from your entry you have more than double move that it gave you already right so the move is there but if you're wrong you have a very uh, tight stop because you're comfortable with your system area of value in many forms uh, divergence in the uh, MACD I can take this trade right that's what it's about and that's the key for uh, today's uh, lesson and you can take any any chart or any chart and you'll be able to see how this thing is amazingly accurate uh, and sometimes we tend to want to force a trade you don't have to force a trade like if it's not there just don't take it uh, even if everything else looks good to you and if you say you know what this is one additional thing I want if it's not take it if but if it's if it's a problem don't take it right you, you can take any stock you want and uh, you know we pull the trigger on the uh, hourly so we're not going to uh, check them MACD on the hourly we just check it on the daily for example here as price is making higher high MACD made higher high no problem here price makes lower high MACD makes lower high but then here is where the interesting part comes we make lower low but in this instance we make higher low boom time to take a trade right if this comes to an area of value time to take a trade it sounds simple right but where it gets complicated is identifying it this is where it gets complicated it's like identifying it in real time that's why i don't like you guys to trade five minutes right it takes like there's too many things to think about in five minutes in one hour it gives you plenty of time because you can just even if it takes you 20 minutes to analyze a one hour chart it's okay because you still have another 40 minutes to uh, make a decision but you just slowly say okay i'm making higher low is macd making higher low yes i'm comfortable i'm making higher low but macd is making lower low or oh, cautious uh, so all of these things you just combine it uh, to make your decision so that's that's your homework your homework is really come up with a couple of charts that we have not looked at and uh you know identify those areas of divergence but i don't want any uh middle of a trend divergence right i want to see those at an area of value that's why that this is the last thing you do you've identified your trend you've identified your uh potential area of value from fibonacci you've identified your supply zone demand zone and now you want to see when price reaches there do i have divergence then you say okay it's time to it's time to get in right it's time to get in full position whatever full position means right if full position is 100 shares at this moment you better put in all 100 shares there is no reason not to do 100 shares uh some other conditions you might say you know what i, I don't know i'm not so convinced then you do maybe 25 shares or 50 shares <laughs> But when all these conditions are there for you, there's no other thing to do. Boom, you pull the trigger. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. One more question. Um, I guess just to just to kind of bring it all back together, can can you help me understand uh, why it diverges? Uh, and what's so the Maybe, sorry, maybe this is too much of a question from like a technical standpoint, but just yeah, to it's understand. Okay. Like... It's okay. What it's saying is the momentum of the one direction is losing steam. When the two moving averages are spread apart and they're starting to go in the same direction, then there's momentum. 
when the momentum dies, they start to come together. So the idea of the MACD, because you're plotting two lines, is showing you when the two are coming together. And then you can see, oh, now they're coming together at a higher point, right? At a higher high or higher low or vice versa. That's technically that's what you're you're looking at. Is the two moving averages not going in the same direction anymore, saying the momentum of this move is dying. So that's what you want to catch. Is when the momentum dies, it works in your favor. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. What other questions do we have? No other questions? It's, it's so easy to implement, right? <laughs> we'll find out. <laughs> yeah, we'll find out next week. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, uh, no other questions. I think we can kind of wrap up the lesson as a lesson for today. And I'll